Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I am here with a unboxing that was kind of like, well, kind of spur of the moment, not really spur of the moment. I did, I did look into this. I read the guidebook, everything, uh, walk through, talk about, I don't know, <laughs> not a review because I haven't worked with it yet, but I did read through the guidebook. So I feel like I'm comfortable with, but this is, uh, the Via Taro, the path of life by Susan Jameson and John Bonner. I believe they are married if i'm not mistaken susan jameson is the artist uh and john bonner is the writer of uh the guidebook now this deck is out of print as it is you know with urania urania ag mueller uh it's um <laughs> i think it's a deck that needs to be reprinted it's one of those that's like so different you know or rather no it's a thoth based deck but it's not the Thoth Tarot. <laughs> you know? And and really, it isn't really a Thoth Tarot. It's more like a Thelemic Tarot. Uh, as you can see, the box came in damaged. Like, the plastic got eaten up. But you know what? It's like those old VHS-type packages. Uh, but I will not be keeping the deck in here now because of that. That's all sharp. That's going to cut it up. But you know what? Thankfully, the deck arrived safe and sound. Uh, let me fix my mic here a little bit. Uh, safe and sound from uh, from the eBay seller. Um, and so, yeah, here are the cards. And here is the guidebook. Now, I will recommend that if you can find the deck, there are two versions. There's this version with the guidebook and the deck like this. And then there is the signed independent version. I believe it's the independent version. Or, like, they got, like, the copies of the decks and they packaged it themselves. It's signed. It's in a different box i think the box i'm not sure um there is another walkthrough i'll link it in the description down below uh where they show that uh version uh where i don't think it comes with the full guidebook but i'm not sure but the guidebook has some interesting stuff uh but yeah I, so i recommend you get this version if you can uh i hope they reprint it but anyways what else can i say about it um i'm not sure <laughs> Let's, which I, I keep talking about this guidebook. Let's get into the guidebook. Uh, so the Via Taro, uh, it's written by John Bonner. Uh, my, my copy came a little bit dirty, but whatever, you know. Uh, you know, the, the contents are all there. Uh, it's, it's okay written, if, if that makes sense. Uh, I, I, it's, it's, uh, it has, it's riddled with typos. I will say that. Um, I'm not sure if... Uh, that is uh, a thing or something. I'm not sure. Uh, why does it look so dark? It's so dark. It is so dark. Here, let me see if I can fix that. Why is it so dark? I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna, we're gonna leave it at that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe it's because of my black background with the white thing. I'm not sure. Here, let me see if I can do something here. No, nothing. It's nothing. I don't know. Anyways, here we go. We're continuing on. Uh, so, uh, it talks about how the deck came into creation, its inspirations, how it was drawn, you know, what inspired it and all that. And the and the, the cards get a good amount of information, though I do wish they written a little bit more on the Empress. Uh, because she is quite different, you know, I feel, from like the rest of the cards. And you'll see that this deck is not very traditional in its depictions of uh, of the of the Thoth uh, system of cards. It is a Golden Dawn deck, I will say. Well, no, it's a Thelemic Tarot. I'm gonna keep. I need to keep calling it a Thelemic Tarot because that's what I feel like it is. It's highly reliant on a lot of Crowley's writings, uh, especially like Book of the Law and the Book of Lies. Uh, you know, I think I think those two in particular, um, and a lot of like the notes that he wrote in the past. And there's something very special about this book where they got permission to uh, share some of the uh, notes that have not been published like for like since forever so until this was this book was published uh, on the Deccans or the Minor Arcana um, which you'll see here you know I'll just let you uh, read those if you if you would like to you know uh, on those two um, so yeah so it's it's very very interesting and I was like oh okay but in terms of like 
what else is given in the minor arcana i wish the guidebook went a little bit more uh into that you know like what was actually going on in the cards what the little emblems were showing what you know i wish it was a little bit more descriptive but i'm pretty sure um they kind of like assume that you're also like reading up on like uh the thelemic books and like crowley's writings and uh the uh and the golden dawn papers maybe you know that kind of stuff i think uh but other than that though i think the guidebook here actually gives you a good starting off point to start reading with the tar with this deck or if you are comfortable with the thoth tarot uh then you should be able to read with this uh deck uh, as well uh so yeah i first heard of this deck by the way like a year ago no it was a while back i can't remember who it was that like i was live i was talking and they were like i'm actually looking for these two decks i'm like what are these two decks and i looked it up and it was this deck i believe and uh, I, I think so and the deva tarot uh, which i'm still on the hunt for I, I you know uh but this one i was like okay this one and 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 i i, I remembered about this deck uh from the tashin uh book on tarot they kept showing like cards from it. i'm like what is this and i was like oh okay okay i remember you i remember you so yeah uh let's 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 get into it let me let me uh let me pause and zoom in here okay so let me now refocus here <laughs> come on where are you oh no oh no no come on where are you there we are hello <laughs> sorry about that uh so yeah uh let's 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 get into this i wanted to i wanted to look up what this book was talking about and i was like because you know it's it's so different well kind of different i honestly thought this was the magician at first but no it's the fool it's uh he's he's passing through the ouroboros of the dragon here uh you know with the lion as well passing through uh the, which you know has its it has its it has its meanings he has his left hand uh on the caduceus right here and his right hand is above the cloud this uh, i believe it's my brain is going to this book called the cloud of unknowing right it, it's it, it's a weird text foolish fish wrote the introduction to like a reprint of it i think i'm not sure but the term just like applies here where it's the on the tree of life we have this space like right where Da'at is above the three supernals and you can see that his head and his arm uh, is reaching up into those into those supernals so he's like his mind is beyond comprehension of what we know you know it, it, it were it's it's thinking and, and understanding and knowing uh, in a in a thought process that we don't aren't used to or understand uh, we have the rabid dog here with, you know, uh, biting at him, which is like the natural world uh, trying to bring us back down uh, through the day to day life. Uh, you can see that he's holding up the double roses, which I think I feel like it reminds me of the fool from the Thoth with the with the flowers at the bottom of the deck. I should have had this uh, ready, but it's it's right below it, right, right by his legs or something. There's a. There's a flower that there's these flowers that reminds me of that for some reason, but it could be referencing something else on this card. But yeah, you can see, uh, you can see there's, you know, these flowers right here. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's something else. I feel I could be wrong. I gotta look more into it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and then you also have, uh, I believe the colors here uh, on the from the cobbler's the colors. I believe I need to double check. <laughs> I'd be wrong. I need to recheck it. I just went through the guidebook. And I'm like anything that's necessary that I need to know. I need to know, yeah. I'm, I'm about the deck. I'm gonna put in here. Uh, we have here the hexagram, uh, which is the union of the above and below, right in his heart. Uh, so yeah, and he and they also describe that his face, his facial features, his head is very monk-like, like he's a monk, you know. Um, you know. So yeah, and you can see on on the on the rose there on the roses there's eyes right there uh so yeah i really want to up the brightness on this but i feel like my camera doesn't want to i don't know why i don't know why let me pause here and fix some things here how is that much better <laughs> you can see you can see it clearly so yeah now let's move on to the next card 
And also with the back, uh, this is, uh, the back is a, I believe we see it, we'll find it in the Ace of Discs, I believe. Uh, but the Tetramorphs, I'm not sure where exactly these show up. I don't think they show up in the deck, but I do like the back. I like the back. It stands out, but, and it matches with like all the other Thelemic, Thoth, Golden Dawn, Esoteric decks that I have, like the Hermetic Tarot, the Tabula Mundi, uh, the Thoth, you know, all that. So here we have the Magician. Moving back onto here. Uh, and we have, uh, or the Magus, I should say, and we have him standing on the hands, uh, and it's like our hands holding ourselves. You know, the Magus is holding himself, visualizing himself as he's doing the uh, lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram, I believe is what it's called, the LBRP, uh, or it might be some of the other ones, but I, it's, it's probably the most common one that's like, one that the Golden Dawn is, or ceremonial magicians are known to like practice like every like every day essentially is what you know you should you should get to the point to where you practice practice this you know almost all the like every day you know? <laughs> um, every morning I go or something make it part of your daily routine uh, and so that's what he's doing here um, you know the the, the drawing the five pent the four pentagrams uh in the four directions uh and all that uh, and then we have the rainbow with the stars what i find interesting are these white spaces uh throughout the deck uh there's uh you know we see it here on the fool and we see it here on 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 the on the magus but moving on uh then we have here the high priestess uh, within her temple, we see that the white pillar and the black pillar are kind of united in this arch referencing Nuit, I believe, how she's usually seen arching, uh, her body arching over the earth. Uh, we have the sun below her for Tifereth. Uh, we have the tails of the hunting dogs uh, forming the, the Vesica Pis, Pisces, the Ves Vesica Pisces, I believe that's how you pronounce that. And we have the triple moon crown. We have the arrows and the bow of Diana. Um, and then we have here the, you know, the dark ring here is supposed to be a reference to Malkuth. Uh, what's interesting here is the rays of the sun. I did not count the rays of the sun. I'm pretty sure they're a significant number. Uh, that's usually the case with these decks. Uh, but what's interesting are these four uh rays in particular that are uh that are you know extended and you know I, i'm not sure if what that is i need to look more into that as to why that one is done in such a way but you know well hopefully we will understand it because there's one thing quite interesting about this and we'll get it into the and when we get to the hierophant that this deck was made quite differently than than others uh so yeah, so here we have the Empress. Uh, reminds me of uh, look at that. This is a. I was like, what just what just poked me? It is a it's a piece of the of that of that plastic case that it came in. That you know, it's all breaking apart. I'm not sure if, whether to keep it or not. Um, but yeah, I don't want to give it away because I don't want to throw it away because this is an out of print deck. But again, hopefully they reprint it. Um, so yeah, what I like about it is it reminds me of the Marielle uh, Emperor card where you see the Emperor just in his profile uh, looking in the opposite direction here. Uh, you know, here he is, you know, right there. Like I, I, It gives me the similar vibes, you know. Uh, but the Emperor is quite different in this deck, as you'll see, as you know with Thelema. But yeah, and so here we have a turtle dove. Uh, the winged helmet here, the head, the headdress is, uh, is, uh, 32 sections, uh, it says, uh, which is very significant, uh, which I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm not 100, like, fully well-versed in the Lima just yet, and honestly, this deck is making me want to get Crowley's other books, like the Book of the Law and the Book of Lies, all that stuff, and just to get a grasp better on this, I'm like, maybe I should, but another time, another time. Uh, so here we have the emperor, and here it's very clear that they rely that that uh, that Susan Jameson is strongly uh, following the uh, Thelema Thoth uh, system of Zadi as the emperor, rather than the star being Zadi, uh, and the path between 
Yesod and Netsak. Uh, if I only had a Tree of Life diagram somewhere <laughs> on hand. Uh, wait, actually, I have one here with the Tabula Mundi Tarot. Uh, let me see, where is it? Here it is. Let me pull it out so you guys can see this. See what I'm actually talking about for anyone unfamiliar with the Tree of Life. Uh, so essentially here, right here, you can see even this one because it's a Thoth Tarot. You'll see that it's four right here, placed between Yesod and Netsak. Um, and so here, you can see that uh, this is supposed to be Netsak, this is supposed to be Yesod, uh, and this is supposed to be, if I'm not mistaken, the feminine and the masculine. Ah, uh, what else? I can't remember, but it's, it's, a, it's another ritual. So here it's, I believe, Isis mourning, and here we have Osiris uh, something. Let me see if I, if I, if I, <laughs> I should have had my notes ready. Uh, but I want to, uh, because it's so different, I was like, oh, wow. Okay, let's talk about her for a little bit. Uh, you know. Uh, okay, yeah, balanced on the emperor's other palm is a naked male facing out the, uh, facing out of the card, who is in the sign of Osiris slain, which, it, which like the gesture made by the female, is one of the Lux signs, or the LVX signs. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can see that these two are holding it up. Uh, what is it? I want to say that they were something else Kabbalistically, but no. Uh, so yeah, what I like about this though, if you wanted to like just take a step back from the ceremonial stuff and just read this in a reading, I was like, you know what? This is kind of very supportive. This is like the emperor being a figure of support uh, and a figure of, you know, structure and, you know, properly supporting not just one type of person, but both dualities, you know, the like and the other, you know, in in a reading, I feel, is what it could be referencing here, I feel. But again, I need to really look at more as to anything of value that is to why Zadi as the emperor, to me, honestly, the emperor is still he, you know, and is still right from that sock to, no, not that sock, from, uh, it goes, uh, to me, he goes right here, uh, from Hokma to Tifereth, uh, for me. Uh, that's just my, that's just me. That's just me still, you know, I, I just can't, that's just, I'm like, it just don't make that, just don't make sense. <laughs> and like any of the, any of the arguments for it, I just, I still can't like, it's not good enough for me. Uh, but here we have the Hierophant. And this one here is uh, very, as they said, uh, inspired or drawn from the channeling from the Enochian scrying that Susan Jameson did. And that's like why a lot of the cards are so different. Uh, from the Thoth and all that, because this is definitely something that's more in line with how maybe even Pamela Coleman Smith did her art and did some of her work. She did a lot of it via like uh, automatic writing almost like, but instead of writing, it's drawing. Uh, and she did it through all in like a meditative trance in a way. Here it's kind of the same. Uh, you know, she connected with, you know, the Enochian spirits, whatever it is, you know, the guidebook obviously explains it much better than whatever I can uh, attempt to talk about here. Um, and I'm sure there's other people that are more well versed into uh, Enochian scrying or whatever, you know. Uh, but yeah, and that's why, you know, it looks so different from others. But you know, it's Hierophant is the Hierophant. And uh, it's one of the one of the main things that was being shown here is the Gnostic ritual of death and resurrection here we see the dead here being resurrected uh with this man you know and so yeah and he's well they are supposed to be androgynous uh an androgynous figure and then this is also supposed to be a lotus flower uh and each of these are the what are they they're supposed to be women but they actually look very androgynous to me still uh they are the let me see here the daughters and of oh wait oh yeah yeah <laughs> they are uh, arrayed on each side contained within a twelve petaled lotus are the daughters of the daughters of light wearing white caps and appearing on the right side while the daughters of light appearing on the left wearing black caps uh, so yeah so there you go uh, and so here you can see the sword they call it the sword of uh, of Abramelin, which is like a, another ritual or ceremony that you know is is done in you know golden dawn uh high magic uh from what little i know 
<laughs> so here we have the lovers. I quite like this one as well. They it, it, this is the first introduction to uh, to a symbol that I haven't really seen much. Or maybe I just missed it, or maybe I'm not really like you know familiar with what it is. But it's the serpent uh, the, the wrapped around the heart, uh, or the serpent constricted heart, or something like that. Uh, we have the child here, I believe, uh, holding the letter uh, holding the letter Z. Zain or Zane, uh, which is like a weapon, and here it's like dripping blood into the grail that the woman is holding. And here we have the man holding the wand. We have Eve and Lilith here. Oh, uh, Lilith is dancing here, mirroring uh, the child doing the as above, so below, in a sort of Baphomet type of shape. Uh, and then here we have the two like two two forms of a weapon as well or a tool you have the sword striking down into the heart but also uh the uh, m this male figure here uh piercing an arrow completely separating the entire card here down piercing the heart uh so yeah and then we have also the sun and the moon and then you know the kind of flipped here we also have the dual headed snake here which is a thing that shows up a lot in this deck as well we see it in the hermit i think also in the hanged man and in uh the eon card i believe uh i want to say these two women also show up in the in the eon card or something i believe that's what the, that's what the guidebook uh is saying or maybe it's the wheel of fortune maybe let me see here mm, da, 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 da. Let me find it, find, find it. I'm not sure. Hmm. No, no, no. I don't think so. No. No, they're the... And, and uh, oh, I completely forgot about this. This concept that I like to see, but they don't really talk about it in the cards that I think it should be talked about. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a concept that I want to look more into when I do... When I look more into, like, the, the feminine uh, aspects in tarot and esoteric imagery. But it is the ama and the aima uh so she is the ama and she is the aima uh the 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 you know the dark mother and the life giving mother you know the sterile and the life giving mother but there's more to go into that you we can like spend a whole hour talking about the lover's card uh, so yeah here we have the chariot uh very very different it reminds me almost again like a lot of mariel motifs i think this the chariot for some reason the circular part here reminds me of the chariots uh in in the mariel uh let me see here let me see if i can find it right unless i'm just like maybe my brain is just filling that in uh right no it's the stri it's the it's the striped uh pattern that's in the back of it that reminds me of it um, so yeah, but here we have a blindfolded woman, which is something very different. It's not something that we quite see all the time in, in, in chariot cards, uh, because I think with the chariot, there's so much a part of being in control of all your senses. So why are you going to have the blindfold on there? That's quite different there, but I'm sure there's a reason here. We have the white sphere, I believe of Keter. Uh, we have the sea eagle here. I like how they put a sea eagle rather than like a specifically a sea eagle you know they describe it as a sea eagle uh for that watery aspect of scorpio of the water uh tetramorph here um oh i'm, I'm pointing at the at the tetramorph here <laughs> uh uh so yeah here we have tigers instead of horses uh and she's she held, she has them by the tail you know grab a tiger by his tail <laughs> Uh, if he hollers, let him go. Uh, and then he's she's also holding a samurai sword uh, with all the tails. So it seems like she's not really able to wield the sword, but she is holding it, you know. But with the sword, she it's also piercing into Keter and it's driving uh, the the chariot in itself. They also say that the tails uh, are a reference to the letter Shin, and the sh letter Shin like shows up quite a bit throughout this deck actually uh i don't know why uh but i guess they i guess they really like the i guess they really like it here let me put it on this side right can you see more of the card eh, it doesn't matter uh and then we also have the four pillars uh for the four worlds uh and yeah that's i don't know what else to say about it i guess that is that is it oh and also the crescent moon for cancer uh so yeah uh here we have justice quite an interesting uh take on justice we have here at the top we have the red 
ray of Geburah, uh, piercing through the green of Lamed. Uh, here we have the equal armed cross of matter with the circle of spirit, which also makes it into Venus, the ruler of uh, of Libra. Did I say Libra? 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 Lamed? Whatever. Um, and here we also have the scales uh, holding the heart, the heart with the serpent again around it, uh, against the feather. Uh, and then we have uh, the figure here with the sort of Ab Abramelin again, uh, and the feathers, the double feather uh, headdress of uh, Ma'at. We have these two women. Here are these two uh, these two girls, actually, I believe they're, they're specifically called, uh, that show up throughout the deck as well. Again, uh, oh, my computer fell asleep. I hope I didn't stop recording. Okay, no, okay. <laughs> uh, and then the pillar here is is this black pillar with the with the solar Tifereth right here, uh, top right here, uh, emerging out of this rose from Netsak. Uh, so it's very much like you're seeing not just, uh, you know, you're not you're, you're seeing not just uh, the, you know, the path of, you know, Gebura to Tifereth, but you're also getting a reference to also death to Netzach. You know, you're seeing this whole path uh, right here in this card. Uh, it's almost like foreshadowing uh, death here in a way. Um but moving on, here we have the Hermit, talks about how this is inner illumination or inner light. We have the uh, Serpent here, you know, kind of intertwining twice over, you know, and we have uh, his arms outstretched uh, with rays of light piercing the tails of, uh, of the two snakes. Uh, and he's also on a pillar uh, topped with a yellow top pillar of Tifereth standing right here and above him is of course a very Christ-like uh, figure uh, that is, I, I can't remember what exactly was written about it let me let me see girl I got the guidebook right here let me see uh, so yeah let's see uh-huh uh -huh, uh -huh. let me see where is it yeah no to cross yeah no oh it's a of course uh, sacrifice of the self, you know, which one would think that this is something that you would see only until uh, the hanged man. But I think that's one of the things that I think tarot kind tarot creators tend to forget is the self-referential aspect of the tarot, where we see, you know, the other cards being referenced in other cards, or foreshadowed in other cards, or hinted at in other cards, uh, like we said here. You know, we see like not only the you know Gebura to Lamed and, and to Tifereth to uh, to the path of death to Nun, I believe uh, to Netzach. So you see, you get multiple cards in this one card, and then it's like, you know, uh, if that makes sense. So here we kind of get some hanged man aspects here. Uh, you know, nine is uh, associated with uh, Odin, so it's like very fitting to have a sacrificial figure in the card, you know, with the nine months that he had to hang on the tree. So, yeah, so here we have the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, I like how it specifies that these two figures are the same person. This is all, which, again, it's like each card is an interior representation of what's going on inside. So, again, these are like, you know what, sometimes life, things are going up, things are, things are, things are, you know, going positively. Meanwhile, in, in life, things are also going down. Things could be better, you know, it's, or, you know, just things don't get in your, things aren't just going your way. Uh, here we have, uh, again, another, I believe, Isis morning type of thing, uh, figure, gesture going on here. And then here we have Osiris resurrected at the top with the, with the symbols of Chesed, with the Ankh, or not the Ankh, with the Crook and the Scepter, I believe. Uh, so yeah. Then we have, um these hands holding up the sphere uh, with, again, the eagle, I believe, which might be a reference to Jupiter uh, in this case. Uh, and then we have the Ankh with, I believe, Keter again. And so, yeah, it's, it's all that. Also, it says that uh, there are 10 spokes here with, you know, each representing uh, the Sephiroth of the Tree of Life. Uh, and But to me, I, I personally prefer uh, for the wheel, as I learned it from like the Marielle, where it's uh, the eight spokes 
the hub, the center, and then the rim of the wheel c making the complete 10, you know, the rim of the wheel being like Malkuth containing the whole entire wheel, the hub, you know, being the source of it being the starting point, and then the eight uh, emerging out of it. But you know what? The 10 spokes also works as well, I guess. Uh, and then we also have the sun in the center and yeah. And this lotus flame thing going on, so yeah. Uh, and the and the purple colors showing up. And again, here we see this white uh, kind of, again, at the bottom. I'm like, is that supposed to be intentional? What was the... Like, I would like to see the original, because you can see that some of them are quite... You know, I think they might have been... There might be... I feel like we're missing something. Like, they're cutting off the full image to make it fit in the card, uh, I suppose. But... I would like to see what the originals looked like, uh, if that's possible. Because it seems that they kind of go up a little bit more, and they might have gone like in an arched bottom way. I would have liked to see how that looks, uh, you know, with this maybe like photo like cut off, unless the white is necessary. Anyways, I'm rambling. Here we have Lust with the... They call it a Ring of Thorns. I'm surprised they didn't call it a Crown of Thorns. That was my go-to idea. I'm like, oh, okay, the Crown of Thorns. Uh, we have these four women here that almost look like they're still, but also in motion at the same time, swirling around in this rose. Uh, we also have, again, these two girls that we show, that we saw in the Justice card or Adjustment card uh, standing atop, uh, uh, sitting atop these two lions. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's much more here. It's less, there's so much more that you can talk about with this card, especially in the Thoth, uh, Thelemic system. Here we have the Hanged Man. Uh, they mentioned that there's like these water hexagrams, elongated water hexagrams, which I'm like, what is that? I've never heard of this. You know, it's, it's somewhere like, I believe, behind him here. These rays, I believe, somehow form it. I, I can't really tell what it... No, I'd have to look up into it. Or maybe it's uh, maybe it's this, you know, right here, maybe? And with this, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you also see, like, the square of matter here with the upside-down triangle of water, but then the, also the upside, you know, maybe that. There's a lot to look into it. There's a lot to digest here. But again, we see the sea eagle uh, of water holding up uh, the Ankh here of life. We see, I believe this is the red of Geburah, yes, and then uh, leaning down into um, Hod, right? Is that the path for it? I have it right here. Yeah, it's this path right here, from Geburah to Hod. Uh, so we have the two serpents here again, and then the Grail of Babylon. Uh, I believe that's what it's called, or the Grail, essentially, with his blood dripping down into the Grail. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm not sure what else to, what else there is to, to talk about this. Uh, so yeah, I think the rays are also numbered in a specific way. Uh, so yeah. So here's a card that's quite different. It kind of lines up with what, like, you know, with quite a few of the other cards, but it seems, for me, it seems a little bit out of place compared to the, compared to the cards that we've been seeing, you know? It's like the Empress, Death, and uh let me see is there another one in here that i kind of miss no it's like just the empress death i believe temperance uh is another one which we'll see right now but they do go into it where it's like the cosmic uh creation these stars and these nebula forming stars and the galaxies all that that's very significant but again it's typical death stuff uh you know but talks about how there are certain death cards that show that it's not a complete skeleton although those do the the, the just the bare skeleton in the in the death card does look nice uh it looks pretty cool but it, it is significant to have the skin and flesh still on the bone so like it's decaying or you know almost like it's it was partially decomposed in a way uh so yeah uh the eye is also a very significant part uh throughout the cards as well uh so yeah which i guess you can kind of see a reflection here with death uh to art uh you know we see the starry background and we see the one eye here you can see that reflection there but it's it's something there not quite fully there also you know the empress the three necklace thing here that i saw on the empress as well which i was like huh three supernals the three horizontal paths on the tree of life maybe um, you know, uh, so yeah, but I like how it's like the stone to organic, you know, 
kind of done, you know, from the sculpture to the statue being broken up and brought to life. Kind of like the story of where the sculptor fell in love with the with his with his sculpture, with the statue that he was making, and so Aphrodite uh brought her to life, uh, so that they could be together. Uh you know. Yeah. Something like that. Here we have the devil, uh, with you know, this uh with this with this skull and it's like this barren desert uh but yeah it's like life still adapts in these difficult toxic not toxic but very arid uh very difficult places to live life can still be found here uh, we have the one eye right here in the center uh and so yeah 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 here we have the tower this one's like probably one of my favorite cards and probably one of my favorite tower cards. Uh, we have the ten spears here and the wolf for iron associated to Mars. We have the uh, we have the eye here in the shape of a of that uh, either a sword or uh, or an onk, both. Uh, it says that here there's like seventy one, right? No, thirty hmm, seventy seven. I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't remember which number, but it's one short because it's like this card and then the rest of them as well uh, is referenced here in this eye. We got, again, the two serpents right here uh, and then the sphere. It's like you almost don't notice it. There's so much going on. But you also see the sphere here uh, in the, uh, you know, the, the continuing throughout the motifs, uh, continuing motif throughout the, the, the cards. We also have the five uh, doves here. You have the two doves out here, and then the three inside is very significant there. Uh, so, yeah. And then we have the star. Again, now we're back to this simple thing, to this simple take. Uh, on, on the cards, she's, like, stepping down the rainbow steps of her temple. We have the seven-pointed star uh, up inside, the, inside this temple. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah, she's like, she's walking down. She's descending. Um, then we have the moon. And this is a very positive take on the moon. Whereas in the Thoth and in other variations of the moon card, uh, the the moon is very, um, it's, it's seen as very um, uh, fearful, you know, terrifying. It's, 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 it's reading it, reading up on it. It's like, honestly, it's right up there with, uh, you know, with the devil and the tower, uh, and, uh, you know, like in the five of cups, even it's, it's, uh, it's a very like, you know, uncertain, it, it, because compared to like the Rider Waite Smith and other more modern takes, it seems that those kind of take it out as like, Ooh, a little bit more into intuition and dreams and illusions. But here it's almost like, monsters and nightmares and you know uh cosmic horror almost <laughs> and, uh uncleanliness and the bestial nature within man um you know and werewolves and vampires and shit like that uh but here it's like it's kind of like a significator of like we're evolving beyond that and it's becoming a little bit you know we're kind of growing beyond that we're learning more and growing past that and touching into more of the higher aspects of the moon uh, rather than what, you know, the before uh, of of the moon cards in the past. So here is a very interesting sun card. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's, oh, man, how do, how do I describe it? <laughs> but I want to say that this is, right, let me double check this, is this supposed to be the holy, I, I, I thought it was a holy guardian angel, but then I think I read it, and then I was like, oh, wait, no, um, uh, let me see, yeah, no, it just says, above the meditating woman towards, uh, towers the mighty form of a winged an angelic being, who presents as male, but whose genitalia are hidden in accordance with custom. Uh, let's see. It is difficult to be entirely certain as to the identity of this impressive looking entity as the via trumps are product of channeling, uh, of a channeling exercise and not uh, the result of conscious scholarship. So again, this is just some, this is a, so, okay. So it's just a figure that was channeled 
through. Uh, there's one thing that she also talks that she, well, John Bonner, I should say, writes about here is that we have the Holy Trinity here of like these three figures here of, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But he also mentions that there is the uh, aspect that Satan could be the fourth figure of that, the destroyer, where almost or like the destroyer aspect of the Holy Trinity being added as a fourth, which I think, you know what, that's kind of. I feel like that's a, that's a, okay. That's an aspect that we can look into because I mean, like, think about it. Like in the Old Testament, we have you know the flood. We have what happened with the Tower of Babel. We have Sodom and Gomorrah. We have, uh, you know, quite a destructive, very like powerful, like you know, uh, uh, yeah, a destructive force that is God. That you know, the punishing form of God in a way, uh, but it's probably more nuanced than that. Another thing that you see here in the shadows is of these three pillars uh, are the, uh, they form the swastika uh, in a way. So, yeah, uh, they don't mention these two stars back here. But anyways, they say that there was a fourth, uh, but hidden behind the two. So it's, again, referencing that hidden aspect. It's that three fourths uh, only seen. And there's that one fourth that's always there so what are these three they're called something let me see what these are called they're called uh mm, do, 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 do. what are they uh damn i can't find it <laughs> and i wrote it down but i can't find where i all right put those notes uh let's see let me see here. No, what are they? Oh, yeah, Ushabtis, right? Ushab Ushabit? Ushabtis? Uh, three Ush Ushabtis. Uh, I don't know what those are. Do y'all know what those are? <laughs> I need to look those up. I feel like maybe I saw them uh, maybe in the uh, Journey into Egypt, right? Tarot, uh, where the Nine of Wands, we see like this temp this room and it's all these little statues that are like guarding uh this this room or something you know uh but yeah uh, she's sitting in a certain position here the lotus on i can't remember what it is uh, and then we have the three flames again and the referencing shin uh there's there's a lot to this so yeah uh and here we have the aeon i like how it clearly spells. i'm like there, there's a difference here between justice and judgment with the aeon and all that like what is it and they perfectly put it into one thing where it's the eon is a judgment of an of an era of a collective era rather than the individual which i'm like oh my gosh there it is <laughs> like finally put it into words for once uh which i'm like this is why i always say which i feel like is very fitting for like what happened in the past year of 2020 as a better you know people like to call it a tower year which really it wasn't uh to me it was more an eon judgment time you know it's like okay we want like particularly for the u.s okay it, to me it was like okay you're calling yourselves a first world country let's put that to the test and a lot of shit was exposed with and 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 come to realization you know and and become clear and called out uh during that during that year with the penny demi and then like the uh, the I guess like the the explosive reemergence of uh, of Black Lives Matter and all that. So yeah, but moving on though, <laughs> it shows here we have the two the two girls here uh, with the crown of Ureyes or something that snake figures god or something with the maat feathers holding up the ankh, uh, which with which is also supporting the scales here with the feather with the sword and the crown of like the conqueror or the emperor and here we have this child i believe with the crown of shin uh right there and then we have tahuti and anubis uh you know recording everything and then of course we have nuit at the top and then i believe this is also what god i can't remember what his name is uh horus no Ra? no some sun deity that is it's very uh important into the lima with the uh with the tablet that steel of revealing or something i can't remember what it's called uh it's oh it's 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 always referenced in the book of thoth and all that so here we have the world a very simple figure but also like a very interesting 
thing that I love. My favorite part of it is this, they, they, she, it's this black ring around is described as a black lotus of, uh, of 10,000 petals. Uh, that is also the serpent, you know, it's this Ouroboros serpent that is also a black lotus of 10,000 petals, a reference to Keter. You know, that 10,000 petal lotus is, is a symbol of Keter, uh, but it's in Malkut. And so it's that reference of above and below uh, and, and how Keter is in Malkut and Malkut is referenced in Keter, and, you know, vice versa, you know. Uh, and then this is also like an, an androgynous figure that's, you know, I believe uh, another Osiris posture being reflected here by the woman here. And then we have the four dervishes dancing around her uh, as the four elements dancing around her. You know, she's like, she's the cosmic dancer of the universe. And I love how dancing is strongly, you know, referenced here, uh, you know, and movement is strongly uh, implicated here. And it's all contained as well in an egg shape. Uh, so yeah, love it. So now moving on to the court cards, the court cards are probably one of my favorite parts of this. Again, if they may, if, if, if the, if the creator, if the deck makes a very good court card, I, I'm, I'm going to love it. I, I, you know, <laughs> but they are pretty basic, you know, Thoth, Golden Dawn inspired, uh, court cards. So here we have the Knight or the King of Wands, uh, here. Again, we have the lightning path reference here. We I love how it's this the the checkerboard floor, but it's also on fire. Um, and then it also has I believe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen, fifteen pillars. It varies. It's like it's either twelve pillars or fifteen pillars. So yeah, here we have the queen of wands. Yeah, with the with the very again. If you know your Thoth, you're gonna know some of this. But there's some added stuff like the rainbow here, the number of flames, the pillars. Uh, yeah, and then here we have the Prince of Wands. It seems that they, where the Thoth is very much like abstractish. You know, uh, more. It's it's it, here. It's it's more realistic. You know, it's it's the the people look like humans, which. Another note to point out, um, I do wish that there was a little bit more diversity, but it does bring up the topic of in ceremonial and high magic. There, I don't, how many, you know, people of color are there, you know, because again, yeah. And also these people look gray, pale, white, but again, because I, I noticed that because I was going through the minor arcana and you'll see there's only one black person and I'm, I, you know, I, I, You'll see. You'll see what I mean. It, it falls into tokenism, this deck. Uh, but again, I don't think their uh, I don't think their goal was to be intentionally diverse. But I mean, it it kind of is pretty reflective of I guess the disparaging uh, disparaging minority. Is that the right word? The the lack of representation and the lack of you know uh, of people of color in you know ceremonial magic circles i guess you know uh, but moving on that's that's a discussion for another day um again so here we have the princess of wands and we have the knight the king i'm sorry the king of cups uh i really love this how there's this big wave here we have this rays of of, of light coming out of the out of the out of the cup with the cancer uh, crab there and then there's still water but like it's like flowing out like a fountain that's like cracked and it's all like flowing out into the stairs which again i feel like we're, we're cutting off some of it i feel like there's more to these pictures than what we can but i guess they had to cut some of the image so that it could fit into the card you know that's that's usually the case with 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 you know scanning and uh making a deck you know and printing it so that the car so the imagery is like clear enough but also you know it, it fits in the card and all that so yeah here we have the queen of cups again this uh, the queen of cups is so interesting this common motif of reflection uh and these lines here you know almost like the the magnetic uh waves you know the magnetic lines you know when you get a magnet and you get like graphite and you like tap it on the paper and it makes the patterns and the ripples on there reminds me of that all the time uh here we have uh scorpio i love how the wings are kind of you know, they really illustrate what, you know, the Thoth Tarot was, the Book of Thoth was describing in the Prince of Cups. Uh, so, yeah. And then it also says that the snakes, there's like one that's going down, one that's going up. 
you know, and that indicates something else, you know. Uh, so yeah, here we have the Princess of Cups. I do like how the dress is starting to crystallize as well. That's something that, again, it's 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 showing the ideas and the designs that we see in the in the Thoth Tarot and in the Book of Thoth, but expressing them almost clearer and also really like helping you know sh reveal and express and explain these ideas in a much better form. I really wonder. I I, I meant to I meant to say this at the beginning, but I wonder what jewels. Uh, from oh, she just changed her na channel name again. She used to be called, uh, damn, I don't even remember her name. <laughs> but Jules, girl, if you're watching this, what do you think of this deck? Because I feel like she's more well versed into these types of things and has you know better, clearer opinions on some of these decks as well. Uh, so yeah, so here we have the knight. I want, you know what, girl, I'm gonna keep calling them knights. You know, king, knight, whatever. You know. Uh, it's because I consider the princes the kings, but I don't put the princes and king. I don't put the kings in the Rider Waite Smith in Hokma. I keep them in Tifereth. It's it's a thing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, I do like this one. How it's like the pillars holding up this diamond and like the space and like the the movement and like what's going. It's it's quite again so interesting. Like who'd have thought it? You know. I do wish that the Queen of Swords, like, the head was a little different or something. You know, maybe there's something to the shape of the head for some reason, why it stays like that. Again, also the dr blood dripping into the into the cup here. Uh, we have her with, you know, the diamond as well. That's, you know, for air and water. And then we have the temple, you know, in the clouds. And we have her, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's typical Queen of Swords. Here we have the Prince of Swords. What I like is how the children, or, the, or I should call them the Sylphs, uh, you know, they look kind of like a little bit like a little lazy, like they don't want to do what he's telling them to do, but he's kind of getting frustrated with them, which is a thing that is uh, significant to this, to the Prince of Swords uh, and his geometric shape here. I do like how he's standing on his tiptoes on the sphere, whereas with the Thoth, it's kind of like he's weirdly sitting. I don't know, the Book of Thoth, the, the Book of Thoth, the Thoth Tarot Prince of Swords really isn't, you know, one of the best illus drawn illustrated uh cards of the princes all the other ones look well but it's just the prince of swords looks so weird but i think that adds more to like why it's like how it is you know like look at compared to that you know uh where he's like he's like not sitting on it right you know <laughs> uh so yeah then we have the Princess of Swords. And also reading through this, it really did help with an understanding of the princesses, uh, the princess cards. Uh, you know, reading the guidebook here, I was like, oh, finally. But again, through my tarot series, you know, digestion of all of, like the different takes on the cards, which I'm working on for my Library of Key series, it's, it's uh, you know, I haven't gotten to the princesses yet or the pages yet. So it's like I'm still having like fully gotten a good grasp on it but here i do like how she's kind of like that stern clear understanding she's destroyed the altar i believe uh is what's being referenced here and she's like a medusa type of figure and really kind of leans into like the actual story as to why medusa was created or how she became medusa uh you know one of the interpretations of it you know where she was turned into medusa to protect herself and to protect priestesses from the temple because she was i believe she was uh the term the proper term for on the internet is essayed uh in her temple in or the temple of athena i think she was a priestess of athena and so athena turned her into medusa to protect her though in some interpretations uh they said that she that athena turned her into medusa out of jealousy which i'm like girl no <laughs> but anyways this isn't a mythology uh, video. We're talking about the tarot here. <laughs> here we have the King of Discs, uh, which we see like these two pillars becoming trees here. We see him with his antlers. Uh, we see him with the with his shield and the colors of Malkut. Um, I believe that's a bull there, which I'm not sure why that's there, because he's associated with uh, um, Virgo. But I guess because... The tetramorph of Taurus rules over Earth, you know, the, the heavenly creature of... Yeah, yeah. I love this Queen of Discs. I love it how there's this vegetation and this desert contrast. 
uh, really more like an Egyptian oasis kind of being depicted here. But I do prefer like succulents and cacti in a queen of disc, but that's just me. That's just a personal little thing, you know, uh, but I do love the Capricorn go. I love her hair. I, I love her. I just love her. Like, I, you know, <laughs> I think she's amazing. I also love the, the Prince of Discs. I do wish uh, there was a little bit more lush vegetation, uh, but again, plowed field, the grass, the wheat, the grapes, you see, you, you get the idea. Uh, and I believe his chariot is also like vegetation as well. Are those orchids too? Let me double check this. Mm, I think there might be like apples or peaches or something. Uh, so yeah, I thought there were orchids, but I think orchids would have been something for a different court card maybe. <laughs> and then here we have the princess of discs. Again, I like how the realism really brings home like the ideas of what, you know, the Book of Thoth was trying to express. Well, was expressing, I should say. No, it's no offense, you know. The, you know, no tea, no shade, no pink lemonade. Because I know y'all love your book. I know y'all love your book of Thoth and your Thoth tarot. You know, it's just, it's just seeing a different iteration of it. It, it really, it, it does help. It does help. But again, you really do have to read the guidebook and be like, here's the idea that that's, that they talk about. Here's how we expressed it. You know, it does help, but you have to study it. You know, uh, you have to read up on it. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I also like how different her altar looks. It almost looks like, it almost like, like it's leaning into the fountain tarot ter uh, territory. Though of course this came out, like, almost a almost a decade before fountain tarot, right? No, more than a little more than a decade before fountain tarot. So yeah, uh, moving on now we have the did I organize this through? Yeah, through just through the suits. When you get the deck, it comes through as aces together than the twos and the threes it goes through it numerologically rather than by suit uh but here i organized it by by uh, by suit just to show you all what what it's all about you know and this card really like i saw i was like oh i really want this deck let me see what else uh but i will say i'm not a big fan of like the repetitive aspect of it but i guess that's the point of the minor arcana you know the, that with the golden dawn they don't want to do they, they they really don't want to try and like make it like Rider Waite Smith. They try and keep it like uh, the Marseille Minor Arcana, where it's mostly the pips in focus, but you know with added stuff onto it. So, but I would like a deck where it shows these emblems here or something like these emblems here more in the forefront. I wish this was more prominent, you know, or bigger or the, took the main center stage. But you know that's not the point, I guess. Um, so yeah, you know, but I will say Mel Maline, creator of the Tabula Mundi, Rosetta Tarot, Pharaoh's Tarot, she is making a deck really focusing more on the decans for the Minor Arcana, uh, and I'm really excited to see what she does there. So yeah, so as you can see here, you're going to notice that a lot of these people are this stone white looking type people, uh, you know, <laughs> so, and, and so when it, when you see the one black person that's in this deck it really it's like okay tokenism like which i don't think they're trying to be like look we threw in a black person representation i don't think that's what they were doing uh at this i'm pretty sure but again i would have i would have preferred i would have preferred a varied color palette of skin colors is that too much to ask it doesn't really affect the meaning you know the meaning is in, like, the symbols and the design, you know, the skin color really doesn't affect it, you know? But anyways, uh, <laughs> so you can see that with the, with the lions is all Leo. You saw rams for Aries, and so now we're moving into Sagittarius. Uh, he, we see him with his arrows. I like how he's, like, holding the sphere or touching the sphere, but or he's, you know, he's either touching it or he's holding it up with his finger. Uh, so, yeah, you see the clouds with the rainbow there, you know. Yeah. Uh, you see the lovers here? I'm not sure, right? They're very, ooh, you know, spicy stuff going on in there. Let me see what's going on in this picture. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the lovers going on there. Is it nine of wands? What is that? That's moon in Sagittarius? Yeah, because of the crescent moon. Yeah. Hmm. So again, you see things going on here, but it is a very like ceremonial magic type of deck. You know, it's it's. I guess you can read into it, but really, 
uh, when you get into the meaning of the guidebook, I do wish that they, you know, gave us a little more than just the divinatory meaning. You know, I don't like it when a, when a deck does that, where it's like, it's quite a different depiction of the, of the standard tarot card. Don't just give me the meaning. If I wanted the meanings that are just inspired from like 78 Degrees of Wisdom or Book T or whatever, we already have that. Give us a little more. Explain what is going on in these images and how that relates to the meaning, you know? But anyways, because I also wish they did it with the aces. I mean, look at what's going on here. Like, what's, you know, the coil here going on here? Uh, the double lotus right there, the waves and the two crests. It's very much like, whoa, you know, the rays here. I believe these are just the the, the colors uh, associated to the card, I believe. Um, so, yeah, because it's like, look, you see his arms like piercing through, rising up out of the water. Uh you see her, you know, the feminine here. It's it's very, like, yeah. And then the two fish, it's like, come on, you know? What's, what's going on here? You see that I believe it's milk and blood, and then milk within there and blood within there, intermingling and all that. It's very alchemical there. Uh, we have the three of cups here. Uh, again, the woman there standing there. Very much, like, almost like Kali, I believe. So, yeah. Uh, then we have, uh, I'm sorry, I'm keeping my computer awake. <laughs> uh, so yeah. And we see that she's holding a sword. Do they all have that? Yeah, some of them do. Um, so yeah. Which I wonder if you can make these, I, I would like to see these like made into like little coins or something or little like metallic talismans or something. I would like to see these engraved like that into them. Uh, I would like, I would like to see that. I would like to see someone do that. That would be cool. So you can clearly see that some of them are very much like uh, Thoth inspired. Like this is clearly like very Thoth uh, based. But for the most part, Golden Dawn imagery of it. You, if you look at like the, the what the Ciceros did with their tarot. Uh, what's another one? Maybe the Hermetic Tarot. You can see that there's a lot of similarities here. You know, just added with the color. But these emblems and the people here really make it different um and here you see how he's like keeping silent here um what's going on with this pillar oh yeah it's the grail again the cup upon the pillar high above the clouds oh, but then you see also three other pillars there i believe there's a lot to go into here it's a very like stop look digest the imagery meditate on it etc you know but it is also like ceremonial it's like depicting stages in a ritual, whatever, you know. So again, here, another example, like, so much going on here. Why didn't you talk about it? <laughs> you know, like you did with the with the Major Arcana. I guess they were on a deadline, you know. So, yeah. Not much else to say other than, like, you know. Yeah, what else was there? What else was there? Oh, oh, look at that. This was like, I believe, a William Blake image. Uh, so yeah, I, I believe so. I believe the minor arcana were not inspired by uh, channeling like the majors were. Uh, I believe they were just, you know, the talismans are from these little imageries. These little emblems up here are really taken from, uh, again, those notes that Crowley wrote or what is written about the Deccans. Um, you know, I think that's what is being shown uh, in these. So here we have the Ace of Discs. I need to double check this because I think Crowley did this with the World card as well in the, in his in his deck. But I was like, I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, a Scorpio and Aquarius need to be switched. But I think that's a thing. It's like for some reason they're flipped. And there is a thing about like. Aquarius and Scorpio, the eagle and the water bearer and the water elements or whatever. Or it's a mistake? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think they know their shit. I don't think they would do a mistake like that. Uh, you know? Um, but it, but it, is, it is a thing. It is a thing that I need to double check on. But again, guidebook doesn't say anything about it. But I'm pretty sure you can come to, you can find out things about it reading up on, on Crowley's writing and in the Book of Thoth and all that. So yeah. L little Baphomet right there. So yeah, so here we here she is. Here she is. 
we have one you know <laughs> i do love her I, I i i do like the four of the four the four of discs yeah yeah, very interesting. And then here we have it, like very much like a Atlas here, and the Thinking Man, uh, Mercury and Taurus, and then we have the five. Um, what are those? I can't remember what they're called. They're called something, but <laughs> should have done my research a little more. But that's not. I'll I'll talk about it in my video series. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm very happy to have this deck. Uh, on hand and with the references, especially with the guidebook, with these notes that Crowley made on the Deccans and all that, you know, this is like, again, it's like, uh, yeah, the triumph of the goat, his glory upon the earth, sun and cow, you know, it's like, I love that. I love that shit. You know, that's crazy, you know, like just reading it. I love the flowers here. Like, like, like again, I wish we got a little more. So yeah, cardstock, it is that, you know, A.G. Mueller, typical cardstock that we see. Uh, let me pause and zoom out a bit here. Yeah, I don't want to, like, hit the camera here. Uh, but, yeah, it is that... Um, it is a very, like, good shuffle. I am not afraid of shuffling this, even though I did. I did, I did pay a pretty penny for this. But I think it was worth it. I have no regrets. Though I will say, yeah, I did pay a lot, but I did pay, like, it is available. Like, it's it's only for sale for, like, I I paid half. I paid half. And it came, and the deck, and the cards came in sealed, you know? And the book came in a little, a little stained and all that, you know? But, yeah, I, 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 I I'm happy with the purchase. I'm glad I got it, and it, you know? And I'm really excited to look into it. And honestly, it, 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 it it finally made me want to get, you know, uh, Book of the Law and Book of Lies and all that by Crowley and look into his other, look into his other writings because I'm like, oh, I guess I'll have to read it, <laughs> you know, uh, to, get, to gain a little bit of a better understanding of his stuff because, you know, it, 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 it does all tie into, into his, into his tarot and into his ideas and all that. Uh, and so, yeah. And also he saw that they're going to be republishing or making a, a new edition of Liber Abba or book four, uh, his book on magic, uh, Crowley's book on my, I believe. And it's Stephen Skinner is editing and annotating it. I could be wrong. <laughs> I could be wrong, uh, but that's coming out soon. I believe through, uh, I'm not sure who's publishing, but yeah, Stephen Skinner. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Or wait, Watkins, I believe, is publishing it. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Uh, let me pause and do a quick reading as an introduction uh, approach to uh, what you know. What 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 you know? It's my little. It's I don't. It's not like a, a tarot interview spread, but it is a good way to see how the deck reads and to see what what its take on what it is to be tarot and what it is, you know, to, to, you know, what it thinks of itself in a way, not to personify the tarot, which I think is weird a little bit. Uh, but yeah, let me see here. Okay. So did my reading that pulled my cards. Uh, so I asked, look at him just creepily staring out at the corner. But anyway, so I asked, uh, what is the soul of tarot? I got this reading by the way, by, from Rachel Pollock on her book, tarot wisdom, uh, at the end of it or something, somewhere around there. Um, somewhere in there, <laughs> uh, which I highly recommend. Uh, so yeah, uh, what what is the soul of terror? We have lust here, very fitting for this for this deck. I mean, like lust is a very fitting, like a very significant card in the Thoth tarot, but it shows that, uh, you know, the soul of terror is like alive and it's passionate, it's pulsing, it's radiating, it's, it's ever changing and shifting and pushing for change and you know all that stuff you know that should be the soul of tarot uh you know what does it express openly we got the ace of discs and it really does it's it's very fitting it's it's the concept of the ace of discs esoterically to me is spirit connecting into the physical matter of world which it's like as an idea in divination or as an idea to express in divination or uh, fortune telling, whatever, uh, to apply to the mundane everyday life. It's very difficult to show like, you know, spirit manifesting into earth 
or manifesting on the real world. But it is that connection. It is that bridge uh, between the the astral or the divine or, you know, the spiritual into the material, into the tangible. Uh, so, yeah, so we have the seven of cups here for what mystery uh, does it contain? And that's like the seven of cups is like, you know, it's, it's very like self-expressive. It's like, well, it contains mysteries. You know, I'm not going to tell you. You know, that's the seven of cups there. It's like it's uh, it's incoherent, but you know, it, there is some truth into what they're saying. You know, it's almost like a drunk person talking. It's like, what are they trying to say? There, there is something there, you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, then we have, uh, and also we have the, the woman, the, the woman on the dragon, I believe. Uh, very, very referential to, again, the lust card. Uh, then we have, uh, what gift does Tarot give us? And the king of wands very much like kind of like almost the opposite of the ace of discs you know where it's like very fiery this is very like earthy eh, well spiritually you know earthy like you know it's like a holy item honestly is what the ace of discs is to me but the eight king of wands fire of fire he's like way up there he's like so pure spiritual energy you know he's very hokma you know he's that pure flowing energy and it's that I think this this I think this this is kind of saying that tarot is used to push us to drive us and to f to pull and to push our focus or energy to get us to do uh, and how to do and why we should do you know and why we should take action and go though of course you have to be careful not to be too uh, harsh not to be too careless uh, you know one wrong step and we can be burning ourselves you know. Uh, that type of thing. Uh, so yeah, Ooh, got a hair there. Also, I've like moved my light a little bit back. I was like, wait a minute, is that in frame? How embarrassing. <laughs> so yeah, so there you go. Interesting, interesting that I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think this might be one I can work with. We'll see, we'll see. And if not, I'm going to for sure just be like referencing it, studying it and using it as an example in my tarot series if I can. Um, and again, I think A.G. Mueller should, you know, republish this. I think they should reprint this. I think this is a, such an interesting deck. Uh, I think they should do it. Or if the artists can, I think they should reprint it independently if they can, if they have, if they contractually can. I hope they do. I think this is a really cool deck. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I hope you all enjoyed. A little bit different, kind of, uh, of a walkthrough, though I did kind of towards the end kind of got back into my old habits of just flipping through. But you know, sometimes you just can't say anything about a card. Uh, a proper review hopefully will come through uh, when I get used to reading it more. Um, and so I can give my own two cents on, on the deck. Um, and so yeah, hopefully uh, I'll do another one of these soon. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, thank you for everyone who supported me on my Patreon. Thank you all. Y'all are getting this early, a week early. Uh, and so, yeah, so yeah, if you want to, if you want to, you know, get early access to these videos, join me on Patreon, you know, uh, support me on Patreon. Uh, and so yeah, the next deck I will be doing, just to give a little teaser, where is she? Uh, is, uh, is this guy right here. So yeah, anyways, I'll see you all later. So and yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you in... The live stream which i have to do that my live stream is tomorrow i hope you all enjoy it bye everyone